Right, so our next two nodes are going to be pixel depth and scene depth. Uh, and what these do is they allow us to access information from the depth buffer. So if we go up to our view mode menu here where it says lit and come down to buffer visualization, we can turn on the overview. Uh, and these are all different buffers that the engine is rendering. So all different parts of the rendering pipeline. In this case, we have base color, we have a specular component, we have the normals, uh, all of these things. Uh, but one of them down here is this one, scene depth. Um, and if I go to, again, buffer visualization, I can do the scene depth channel. And that will show me um, what the depth buffer looks like. And effectively, it's just a measure per pixel of how far away um, things are. Uh, and so in this case, um, anything that's far enough away will be bright. Anything that's closer up will be dark. Uh, and you do get banding. So you'll see here there's sort of a dark band coming in. Um, that's to do with how the accuracy of things are stored. And so there's actually a very different um, yeah, it's a representation to give us more information in our depth buffer when we're looking at it, but it's actually storing the data as zero being close to the camera and high numbers being further away, I believe. Um, so occasionally you'll see banding in your depth buffer, uh, and that will be because, yeah, in the way it's giving us that representation. Uh, so what we get is, yeah, an image of the scene, um, or an image of uh, how far away things are in the scene. Um, if we've got some other examples here, just quickly Google for depth buffer. Uh, you can see same thing here, this um, environment um, completely driven by depth. Um, same one again, various things. Um, useful for fogging, almost looks like a foggy environment um, and actually is used for fogging. Um, in that kind of calculation if you wanted to um, but we can use it for all sorts of stuff we can just grab access to it um, through our material so if i go back to lit and find oops camera a bit fast uh, find access to it in here so if we open this up pixel depth now firstly thing to note it'll only work with translucent and additive materials um, if i change this to opaque it should then give me an error Ah, so pixel depth doesn't, scene depth gives me an error, there we go. Um, so effectively what's happening is we have some geometry that builds our world, whatever that is, and then we have some transparent geometry, and then our camera is here, if I use a different color again, we're looking through our objects. Um, <coughs> so pixel depth, gives us the distance to the pixel being rendered. So in this case, that would be that point. Uh, and scene depth gives us the distance to the nearest, or to the, the furthest, I should say, uh, or first, uh, opaque pixel being rendered. So it ignores any transparent objects. So transparent objects don't render into the depth buffer. Um, and so if we're trying to access the scene depth, we need to be using a transparent object. Uh, if I change it back to transparent, translucent, that should now work correctly. And so what we get is there's two different representations of our scene. One is the scene without any transparent objects, and one is the scene with transparent objects. And if we subtract one from the other, we can access, or we can get this, uh, this idea of fade distance. And so what's happening is as the sphere is getting closer to the floor, we have a fade distance because the floor is solid, it's opaque, the sphere is translucent, the de scene depth and pixel depth are different, uh, and we get um, a fading amount, and I can control that via the scale value. And this is what the depth fade node does. If I plug this in, it's the same node here, same distance, it's giving us the same value. Um, so reading from the depth buffer, either scene depth, which will be the distance to the pixel being rendered, or the um, pixel depth, which is the distance to the opaque pixel behind. I've said that the wrong way around, haven't I? Pixel depth, the pixel being rendered, that makes sense. Scene depth, the depth without any translucent objects in it. Um, and I believe if I go back up here to depth, yeah, so the translucent object here, I don't know how well you can see that, uh, it's not writing to depth at all. So the transparent object here is not writing to depth. Whereas 
it's still here. So that allows us to do that sort of soft fade transition between objects. Um, if I do that in opacity, that's going to work much nicer to actually do the fade. So now, if it compiles, my depth fade value is way too high. If I put this down to about 50, we should see a nice soft fade. And you can see we're getting a little bit of that in here as one object is fading off into the other. So reading the scene depth, reading the pixel depth, and using the two and the distance or the difference between the two uh, as a calculation. Um, very nice, very useful.